Hi guys, you guys are listening to WLPN LP Chicago 105.5 Lumpen Radio. This is What's Up, and today we are broadcasting live from Studio B in Bridgeport. My name is Melissa. And I'm Nine. And in today's edition, we are having a conversation with a very special guest. Um, they are coming all the way from New York to perform in the annual festival Villa Palooza 2019. And they are Ratas in Celo. Welcome, everyone. Um, <laughs> Ratas in Celo are a immigrant Latina accordion punk band. Um, can you all introduce yourselves and tell us what instruments you play? Rata accordionista. Mm, my name is Hiromi. Hi, I'm Natalie. I play bass in Ratas. Hi, my name is Jadi, and I, pl- I do the vocals. Hi, my name is Maria, and I'm the drummer. Cool. Awesome. Thank you for being here. How's your morning going so far? Awesome. We just had a great breakfast at a Mexican place by the house. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. That's good. The Mexican um, food in Chicago, I think, is really good. It's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So um, can we talk about uh, the band a little bit? How do you all identify your music? Uh, to me, it's uh, punk, uh, you know, accordion punk with uh, estrogen madness, bunch of pelos. And <laughs> it's just kind of like a unique thing, but it definitely for us is punk, you know, punk rock. Cool. Mm. Can you all say the same or? Yeah, I think I s- we stay on the punk spectrum, which definitely just add the accordion as a uh, personal instrument that we play. We never planned it that way, but we just kept it and it worked. Awesome. And like, what message does like Ratos and Celo give? To me, it's like, uh, we encourage people to empower yourself with the problems you see in the world. It's not about, you know, just protest and feel bad about it and the world, you know, is, is just a horrible place and look at everything that's happening. It's more like, yeah, this is happening, but we have so much power and we can do so much. So it's to me, empower the people empower ourselves that's awesome i think that like music is a very smooth transition to really communicate a message and empower that and i really feel like that energy through your music um like when i listened to it i was thinking like these are some really like heavy topics in a way but like they're also fun and i can like move a little bit and not feel like oh my god i'm feeling so anxious you know (laughs) so i think that's really awesome um how did you how did the band form uh 2014, uh, in May, uh, Hiromi, the accordionist, and me, the drummer, we were at a party, we were just talking, and um, like I said, I play the drums a little bit, and she said, oh, I play accordion a little bit, and then we just said, okay, we should like jam. And the cool thing was that we actually did it. Like A lot of people say, oh yeah, we should get together and like jam or something, and then never, it never happens. But I think like two weeks or a week after that conversation, like we actually met at a studio in Queens in New York. And um, yeah, we started like just playing, playing around. I like the only thing I could play was like Ramon's kind of drums. And she was like jamming over those beats. And then I guess like a month after uh, Mm -hmm. that first practice, um, Yadi, the singer, joined us so she started like improvising over like the two or three songs that we kind of had put together that's awesome so through that conversation was that like the point where you all uh, met um you and um Hiromi no we had met I guess a year before that um uh, but that that party I guess we we started like hanging out more we we all like know each other from like the Latino immigrant punk scene in New York. Um, it's, a, I would say, a male-dominated uh, scene. So when we, started, when we started jamming, we said, okay, we, we have, we're three girls, three females. We should find a bassist. We didn't really want to you know, do guitar. So we wanted a female bassist, and that took us <laughs> a while to find. But yeah, and then we we you know Kate joined us. Uh, we we had to beg her a little bit <laughs> <laughs> to be in the band, but it was so awesome that you know we could keep it all girls. Um, that made a a big difference. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, and and that we were all friends. That the, our only condition is what, it was that somebody that we will need to be 
comfortable gossiping with, laughing with, being uh, or self. We didn't want to be, be with somebody that was uh, too into the music and not really into the whole concept or idea that we have that we were just like friends doing or girly thing every week and it, it was like our excuse to gossip to complain to stress to yeah to just to have that excuse to meet every week and also like we we felt confident like with each other like i can barely play the drums and you can barely play the accordion but we still like we're still doing it you know like we always thought that if we had like a guy <laughs> in the room saying, oh, you should play like this, which it, it's happened, it still happens. You should play like this, you should, you should play like that, or like people telling us, like, you should have a guitar. Um, but with us, because we were like so uh, new to our instruments, and like Hiromi said, like we, we basically we wanted to have fun and just like see what happens. Um, we, como se dice, como, we, we were confident we gave each other confidence, I guess. Yeah, just comfortable. We were comfortable. Comfortable, too, yeah. yeah. That's awesome. What about you, Natalie? What was your arrival in the band like? Uh, well, I ended up joining uh, about a year ago. Yeah, I think a year ago. They were they had a tour to um, California last year. And their, well, I guess Kate was the last bass player. She moved away to... Elena. Oh, Elena, yeah. And um, I used to go support their shows and... Um, I remember like one of the last times I saw like Yadi like jumped on top and you're so excited I was there. I was like, what? <laughs> and then like a few days later she invited me to go play um, to come to practice and try out bass because um, they didn't have a a bass player to go to California with at the time. So yeah, I went to um, a couple rehearsals and practiced a lot <laughs> and yeah because it felt like so natural and comfortable with them and like really enjoyed the time um, practicing and felt like I, I would never have the confidence to go <laughs> and play with the band like first shows <laughs> in California but um, yeah we did it and then we came back and um, yeah we kept going to practice and ended up joining and playing shows in New York too so now yeah yeah <laughs> <we're after. laughs> that's awesome so I have a question. Why, out of all animals, did you guys pick rata or ra rats? Mm -hmm. uh, well, at the beginning, you know, because I always joke around with them, I used to call us ra uh, gatas, gatas and celo, just to play around and they would laugh. So, you know. Um, and then one day, Iromi was at a show with a friend of ours, and he was confused, and he didn't remember that it was gatas, and he said, oh, you are the ratas. And, so, and Iromi texted, oh, this sounds better, ratas and celo. So I guess it's more punky, it's more fun, and it's, to me it's cute too as well. <laughs> so it, we never really thought about a name, we just kind of like went with the joke and just kept. <laughs> it's also a kind of gross animal, and the fact that it's in heat, which is like the animals I basically bleeding at the time most uh, mammals and four legs they bleed it whenever they have whenever they're in heat so it's just gross yeah. it's also part of it it's having a, your period too sometimes dogs dogs too they bleed do when they're in heat so we just it's true though it's yeah. something awesome. considered gross it was it was also kind of a joke on like oh, uh, a joke on like punk band names how they like they're kind of like uh, gross or aggressive or, but it's a joke like a yeah like rude but joke rude but we're now we're like we wear like rat ears and we we make like rat sounds like we're we're cute. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. I think that like you all hold that name very like well because you know it's female you know and who bleeds females bleed you know <laughs> like we do everything while we're still bleeding but anyways um yeah that, that's super awesome yeah i was thinking like they're also um rats are everywhere you know you mm -hmm. find them anywhere in the country at least that i know of um and like i feel like again not to like get all like you know specific but like mm -hmm. your music um does touch on things that like topics that are important everywhere you know, so they're like not missed, just like rats are not really missed anywhere you go, you know? <laughs> yeah. So that, that's pretty interesting. It was pretty simple. I thought it was because of New York and how there's a lot of rats in New York. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, it's always so that too. Mm -hmm. 
that's awesome um so prior to the band what was your um experience with music and instruments like growing up through you know out your life and stuff like that to me zero <laughs> <laughs> But I always, I'm a, I always, I'm a writer, so I write a lot, and I guess that helped me a lot because I'm the vocalist, actually. Um, so I guess improvising music with Demi was easier because I had written so many things in my life that I guess it kind of like helped my brain a little. But I was definitely not a singer; I had zero training on music or instruments or singing. So, but I was, I consider myself uh, good improvising in the moment. Cool. Um, I, I guess I had been playing drums for uh, like a couple of years before I I started like jamming with Hiromi. Just like getting together with with friends, with male friends, like at a studio and drinking and hanging out and they will all like play instruments and like switch instruments. They all knew uh, like a few instruments. And I said, oh, I want to learn drums. So I learned like little by little. I you know, very basic stuff, but that was it. Like, I had never played in a band before. Um, I played piano as a kid, like, took piano lessons, but really wasn't into it until getting into, like, the Beatles and, like, classic rock music. And then uh, moving to New York, I joined, like, I forget how I met, like, in a, um, in a cumbia punk band over there, playing keyboard, and then... I don't know, I wanted to learn bass, and I played in the subways with, like, another friend who, like, taught me how to, like, some ba cumbia bass lines and stuff, and then, yeah, and that's how I met Ratas in those um, shows, and um, wanted to keep playing bass. Mm -hmm. yeah, I, me, actually, wanted to play accordion because I really liked cumbia, and then I got an accordion, and I started learning cumbia songs, just, like, popular cumbia, but I didn't like mm, playing cumbias. I didn't like it. I was very frustrated. I felt like I, w I prefer being dancing or just partying with this music. I don't really want to be playing it. But then when the opportunity came and I to do a band, uh, there was the option of, do, should I learn guitar? Should I just try to sound more punky? And it was like, uh, but this is the only thing that I know how to play, so why would I try to fit the music, fit to the music? I'll just fit the music to me. So I just, we just kept, we skipped it like that. It was never very, uh, we never really planned it. Like, oh, we're gonna do cumbia and, or, or we're gonna do accordion yeah. punk. No, like, it's just that this is what, the only thing I knew how to play. Yeah, like we never said like, oh, let's let's make it different. Let's, let's like use the accordion just like to be different and not use a guitar to be different. Like basically Hiromi knew how to play the accordion and we said, we all agreed that if we added a guitar that would make the accordion like just a common second, like a sec, yeah, like a secondary instrument. And like, why would we do that? Like, that would make it. I don't know. I don't know. The accordion just as the lead instrument just sounded good. So we didn't see the need to add a guitar. Uh, although a lot of people told us in the beginning, "Oh, where's the guitarist? When are you gonna find a guitarist?" And even now, they, they still ask and like, oh, if, if it's punk, it should you should have a guitar. Like, okay, but no. Or, oh, whenever you need a guitar, I can play yeah, all the time. Then it's no. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, we we're not you know. hiring. <laughs> 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 but um, that's awesome. Um, and speaking more about music, like, what musicians did you guys grow up on, or what um, music has inspired you, like, as a kid, teenager, or like right now too. Well, I think uh, growing up, I used to like um, Pipera. It's a Spanish band, a lot. And bands like Non Serbian, um, maybe a little bit of Rancid, too. Uh, a lot of punk from Spain, I don't, you know. I guess my sister, she's my older sister. She's a year old. She was also my influencer. And I felt like, right, like it was meant for me, you know, punk music. And well, that was growing up, I think. That's one of my biggest influence people. Like I love people. Escape it also. I like very much. <laughs> yeah, well, pretty you also much. like like oh, yeah. cumbia and stuff. Like that. Yeah, cumbia and stuff like that. Y uh, later on, it was more like you know we started dancing and things like that. But yeah, I s growing up, like man, the first music that we got into like with heart and passion was punk, mm -hmm. and it was mainly bands from Spain. Spanish. I think like Jay said for us it was the same. Spain nineties for because I think the language. The bands in English didn't really. I was. It sounds good, but I don't really know what they're saying. So bands in Spain was the really was the ones that were shaping us. 
then we love cumbia, we love salsa, we love reggae, we love dancing music, but I don't want to play that. I want to dance to that. I want to party to that, but not play play it as um, like a form of expression. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You, Natalie? Um, yeah, the punk music, I, I don't know, I entered the scene in New York, but like, and would go to all the shows, but never, like as a kid, it was always like the Beatles, like I was obsessed with the Beatles, and <laughs> yeah, like Led Zeppelin, and like 70s British rock, I guess, and, um, but yeah, and then reggae a lot, once um, moving to New York too, and the punk and reggae scene kind of crossed over a little bit and also like the cumbia like at all the punk parties you'll start playing cumbia too and so that's how I got into that I guess just living in New York and um yeah now I really have kind of changed to listening more to yeah that kind of more of the reggae (laughs) reggae music I have a question like what's your favorite Beatle who's your favorite Beatle I guess yeah John John <laughs> and you? Oh, um, so influences. The Ramones are my favorite band ever. Um, they're from Queens. I'm f- I live in Queens. I migrated, you know, from Peru. And Queens is like a, such a diverse place culturally. Um, b- and the Ramones are like not diverse, but <laughs> like they're you know white men from from kind of the suburbs, but uh, I don't know. I don't know why I, like, when I moved to New York, I, I guess I learned English a lot through the Ramones. It was kind of easy to to follow along with the lyrics. It's kind of simple, but it's also, like, really energetic and kind of emotional at times. Uh, so when I started, like, playing drums, that's all I could play, and that's all I wanted to play, and that, that's all I can still play, the Ramones. Um, and yeah, like same thing. Like growing up, I would, you know, at home, like salsa. There's a lot of salsa and some cumbia, uh, '70s rock too. Like with my dad, like '90s rock, grunge. <laughs> uh, and but like, I guess moving to New York, I l- listened more to like uh, the local stuff. Mm, okay, okay. Yeah. And so where are you all from, and how long have you been in New York? I am uh, from El Salvador. I came here when I was <laughs> 17. I probably lived in the States for 11, 12 years. But in New York City, like a stable, like in there, maybe seven years. Um, I'm from um, central New Jersey. Yeah. yeah. Super <laughs> rural, <laughs> nothing, <laughs> nothing going on there. And I moved to New York 2011, so oh. almost 10 years. Wow. Yeah. Oh, I am from El Salvador, and I came here when I was 16. And the first day we came, it was New York. I moved to Brooklyn. Then I moved back. I still live in New York, but I live in Long Island. I'm Peruvian. I moved to New York uh, 2000, no, yeah, right before 9-11, uh, when I was 13. No, oh, that's awesome. So talking about New York, can you guys talk to us about the punk movement in New York and the scene from um, your experiences? There are, I would say, like different scenes. I guess that's everywhere, right? But like there are different scenes. Uh, we, you know, our group was like the Latino immigrant punks, uh, mostly Mexican, I would say some Colombian, yeah. some Peruvian. Um, so in that scene, like I said, it's, it's mostly male dominated. Uh, most of the bands, I mean, now, now it's it's kind of changed a little bit. Well, I, I haven't. I'm not an expert, but I haven't been around for that long. I guess like five or six years. Uh, now there are a couple more bands, like female fronted, what they call female fronted bands. Um, then there's you know there's a, like the hardcore scene, New York hardcore, like all different kinds of like. 
smaller groups. Uh, it's very divided, I guess. Like it's a lot of diversity. Yeah, it's very diverse. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> and um, a lot of the venues too are closed oh, now. I'm that dying. we used to yeah. Go. yeah so um, it's not. I mean, there are DIY spaces, but it's like you have to know someone to get there. Um, yeah, there used to be a lot of bars that the venues that have been closing because of the rent, you know. Uh, there was ABC No Rio, which is also a DIY space, and I guess they are under construct reconstruction or something. They, they haven't been open for a while. Years. For a couple years. Um, there, yeah, like even DIY spaces, like they just open, like pop up, and then they close. They mm -hmm. shut them down somehow. You think it's been like that for like a while throughout like the years that they open up, close up? Cause I feel like that happens here in Chicago too. Yeah, I think so. Part of it is gentrification. Rent goes up. They can't afford to keep it open, and there's not a lot of support from the you know communities also. So they have to close. And we have very few places open right now, but we're glad we still have those places that at least are uh, holding punk shows or alternative, you know, other type of music that other than mainstream music yeah yeah i feel like little village is going through like a very similar stage of that um where a lot of um underground spaces i guess were not um being very active and also a lot of gentrification coming into the community but um it's interesting that you said also that the community doesn't really react to um voice some of those things mm -hmm. i feel like in contrary a lot of the young people in little village are trying to like speak up on that so i think that's very interesting and it does impact and try to change the outcome of how things are moving yeah. um so jurassic park 2016 how was that it was super fun we love that show we actually it's one of the memories that we had that like, yeah that show in chicago that's awesome so yeah we actually would love to play that again <laughs> yeah is it still open um no. i think not no. at the moment what? actually yeah mm. it's been like that i think for the past year oh, oh wow. yeah how did you guys like the space inside it, it was, was it was it was nice. I mean, we kind of had kind of had a space like that in New York, but now with all the like sculptures the and little art dinosaurs, and stuff. yeah, <laughs> the dinosaurs. <laughs> you no, know, it was fun. It was really fun playing there. It was spacious. It was just it fe you felt like you were somewhere else, and it was just like such a nice place to be, such a nice place to hold a, a you know a punk show or yeah. any other show. So we at least we're glad that we had the opportunity to play there before. You know, hopefully it doesn't close, but. Yeah. So for those um, of you listening, Jurassic Park is a DIY space, um, a backyard space in Little Village. So that's what we're talking about right now. Um, how did you guys make that connection to um, Chicago at that time? Uh, <laughs> my my ex-boyfriend. <laughs> yep, he's from Chicago. Uh, he was in a band called Pervert Preachers from... I guess Chicago. I don't. Know. <laughs> I don't know what exactly where. But um, so we played Minneapolis that same year. No, mm -hmm. two thousand. A few months after we left. Chicago. Yeah, really? we played Minneapolis. Like we left New York for the first time in two thousand sixteen. We like met this band from Chicago, Pervert Preachers, and then we uh, we got this show in Chicago at uh, Jurassic Park. Wow, it's been a long time. <laughs> <laughs> cool. So it sounds like you guys have frequent a lot of um, DIY spaces. How do you think that has helped you guys sh um, shape as a band and just like, you know, as individuals? I think that uh, that's where we party. That's where we socialize. Like, not just playing, but whenever we go to see a band, we go to pl sp places like that. I mean... We are part of the scene, so we always, since mm, we started uh, punk, pr probably in El Salvador, as, as a sister, we've been going to DIY spaces in El Salvador, so it's something that has always been around. I never really mm, thought about the way you say the question. Mm. We had, well, we had a, a cool space in, in Brooklyn, uh, Silent Barn. It was... Uh, it was a big space. He had um, like art artist studios, like small artist studios, and also like a 
like a venue, uh, like a show area, right? Like a stage and a little bar. It was it was cheap and <laughs> yeah, we would go there to see bands um, and we played there a few times and I obviously it shut down because the gentrification. Um, but yeah, like like we said, now like uh, the places that hold um, shows, I would say, are bars or venues and they're not cheap. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think they're also like DIY spaces are a lot safer. I feel like you kind of are more in touch with like who's in there and you kind of know like, oh, I seen you at the last show and, you know, you could identify someone quicker um, and also just because I feel like it's more like of an intimate, I know this space type of situation. So mm -hmm. I also want to say that in most DIY spaces, there's never a security and there's rarely a problem. In bars, they have securities and it's more likely there's problems for some reason. In DIY spaces, there's no security. Everybody just watch each other's back. Uh, whenever you have a security, there's always a problem, and a lot of the times with the security. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's awesome. I mean, that that's awesome because it's gonna touch on a on a subject in a bit, but um, that's that's interesting. And it's like, what do you guys consider like these venues like more interacting with your community, or like do you think it spreads something? I think so because a lot of uh, benefit shows that are for like a good cause, you know, they're whole in DIY places. And um, I think there's more freedom. And it does help the community because now you have a space for art, you have a space for music, you have a space for you know events, any type of uh, artistic event. So yeah, I think um, we need more of these places. Huh? All ages too. All ages, yeah. There, yeah, I mean, if it's a, a show is at a bar, it's obviously not all yeah. ages and that sucks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it prevents like the young people from being yeah. in tune with the culture exactly. for sure. Well, we're going to go on a short break and you're listening to What's Up Broadcasting Live from Studio B. And our, remember that we are in conversation with Rata Sencelo, hey. um, a Latina band from New York. And we are What's Up. Hello, and we are back, and you are listening to WLPN LP Chicago 105.5 FM Lumpen Radio. What's up? And we are in conversation with Rata Zencelo. Say hello. Hi. What's up? <laughs> so we were just touching up on a, a lot of good subjects. Um, we talked about DIY scenes. We talked about where you all are from and your music influences and how the band started. Um, so touching up on the last part, we were talking about authorities and um, police, security, and spaces. Um, can you talk to me a little bit about your song, Policia? Yeah, you know. Uh, I always thought like, yeah, we know we ne we're not gonna make a song about police like every other band because you know I didn't want to give the energy. But I guess sometimes you kind of wa want to let it out. Those things that, I, as at least uh, my personal opinion, I had since I was like my, you know, a child. Like you see all the police brutality, you especially in our, in our countries too. Um, you grow up with that, you know. And sometimes you just want to let it out, and I felt like it was necessary. And it, it really empowered us because it tells policias no mas. It's also a way of like, if you educate the children to follow their dreams and their full potential, they wouldn't be these young people young in the police because they have a no way out. And I'm saying this for experience, you know, one of my exes actually, he wanted to be an actor, but if because it didn't work, he gave up, he got frustrated, and he joined the police. And it happens all the time now, though we have all these people frustrated, angry at their lives, becoming people with power over other people, and that is not right. So I felt like it was a way of, you know, letting it out and empowering people and just, you know, being conscious about this problem, you know, educate the, the youth about it. Yeah, for sure. I, I think that's a really important thing you just said because I feel like uh, at least here in Chicago we focus on like oh you know it's a cop this and that but nobody really sits down and thinks like this is a human being that has their own issues their own problems they're in the working you know mode and they're bound to take it out on somebody you yeah. know what I mean I feel like that's been reoccurring in my head a lot lately when I when I come across situations with cops myself or see somebody on my peers and I'm just like you know you need to take some water and relax you know because I'm just a, like you don't have to talk to us like that. But yeah, and, and how you're touching up on like youth, like um, 
I was just like thinking also about how in the United States here in Chicago the is police um, brutality. Yeah. Or it's like it's just cops like to lash out on you because they feel like they have more power. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And I there's that. there's cops in schools. So that's mm-hmm. really important. Um and according to Urban Institute, sixty seven percent of high school students um have a cop in their school and more than likely they're in areas with um higher rates of Hispanics and black students. Absolutely. So that's insane. So yeah, I think that What's your intake on, like, police around youth? Um, Anybody else? (laughs) I mean, uh, hopefully people can teach their children, right? Like, well, I'm a a pre-K teacher, um, so when we teach about community helpers, we have to say, well, firefighters do this, and doctors do that, and then police officers... Like, they help their community. Like, and I mean, I have to say that because it's part of the curriculum, whatever, but at home, my niece and my nephew, they know. Like, the cop, a police officer is not your friend. You know, they're there, like, they, that's their job, whatever, but that's not someone that's going to help you. So hopefully people can teach their children that, okay, yes, uh, it's part of the community, it's part of society, like, we have police officers, and but if you have an issue, if you have a problem, that they're not the ones to call. They're not the ones to trust. They won't help you. They they will only make things worse. Um, yeah, like teach young people that. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. I think that um, I don't like the idea of myself of cops in school. I feel like it can really ruin. Um, a youth's future through like a minor mistake that you know we're learning and we make mistakes so yeah I definitely agree that from like some knowledge from home like letting your young people know like hey you know if it comes down to that do it but you know there's other people you can go to as Mm -hmm. well I was like I would say personally since I'm like in school Mm -hmm. or whatever but um yeah I think it's like it makes me nervous I don't know walking in the halls although I know I don't have anything I don't do anything wrong just like nervousness, like the feeling that I know someone is better than me or superior, yeah. or like can do anything and I can't do anything about it. So yeah, I ca- I understand the nervousness and like. But is it an actual like police officer or yeah, like a security? Yeah, no actual secu- police officer oh, with their badge, and gun, and everything. Clubs. Yeah, with a gun. Mm-hmm. Some of them will carry a gun. Yeah, and also uh, uh, there's forty five percent of middle school students with cops in their school but you wanted to touch up on anarchism oh yeah because you guys mentioned anarchism in in your songs so i was like oh do you guys like actually believe in like the whole ideology behind it uh well i think that you know especially our ex-bass player kate uh she was really into that but i we i do agree with a lot of the ideas of it and like, it's not, like, listen, I'm not against a group of people who will protect the community. Like, as we think hop should be, like, you know, if somebody's breaking your house, you call somebody. I'm not against that. But I am against the fact that they are abusing their power to the point that they can kill somebody. And they wouldn't even get in trouble. Mm-hmm. And most of these people is people of color. So, yes, uh, we do encourage a lot of the anarchist uh, ideas of, like, having, uh, you know, no government, uh, no higher authority in the po- in a in a point of view of like they can kill you and it's okay you know um i feel like a community can establish itself from the roots you know from the roots in schools teaching children and becoming the example that we want to see in the world like yes we talk about oh what's happening in the amazonas you know these crazy rich people blah 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 blah, blah. but we hope that uh, you know the villita doesn't end up like a garbage can tonight so we have to start from the root of ourselves and yes, we uh, support a lot of the anarchist ideas, for sure. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. Yeah. Like how you said, start yourself like in your song, Cuchi, right? Yeah. Like you have to <laughs> hacer el esfuerzo, you know, comp- hacer tu parte. It's very yeah. true. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. That's the song. I, I love that song because it kind of brings a little bit of consciousness. You know, nobody's born racist. Nobody's born, uh, a, you know, wanting to be a cop, abusing their power. But if we don't take it from the root that to me is children is youth if that is to me the future if we don't shape it from there their future is going to be like it is right now all over the place but again to me there's more good people than bad people it's just that bad people do more disaster Mm -hmm. i definitely think it's like how society molds us to believe 
So yeah, the people who are bad, they probably have more power, and that's how they convince others to do the same. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's I totally agree with that. On a brighter note, you guys <laughs> are very creative individuals, you know, and very outspoken. And, you know, I can tell that music is not your only outlet. Can you tell me a little bit of what you do? Like, I know um, some of you might illustrate, dance. Um, can you guys tell me a little bit about other creative outlets that you guys have? Uh, well, I really like dancing and I got into online and looked for ways to market that and monetize it. So I jumped uh, now full time as content creator. I focused on alternative and vintage and subculture dances. That's what I portray, uh, document and promote that dancing. Um, on your Instagram, you were teaching a class here in Chicago? Yes, I was teaching three dance workshops in uh, North and Soul, a British uh, dance style for soul music, American soul music. Uh, cumbia Timeline, which is a class where I go through all the styles of cumbia in Latin America and the why behind it, the story behind some of the moves. And the last one was Boogaloo and Latin. So we explored the different options that we have uh, for dancing the same music, the same era. So it was, it was fun. It was the first time I did it in Chicago. How was the group you were working with? Mm, not a lot of people because it was very, like, I don't really have a lot of audience over here, but it was a lot of fun. It was so, it was very, very natural. Most, way better. People is, seem, here seems more uh, down to earth than sometimes New York. New York people seems more pretentious. They want to be uh, a little bit more perfect in everything they do. And me, myself, I fall into that because you're around that you can't get away. When I get out of there is when I realize, oh, oh I'm so domesticated to that. But yeah, it was really, really nice. I really liked the experience completely. I loved it. That's awesome. Um, I make pizza back in New York. I have a, like a little pizza um, pop-up company. So yeah, I rent out a kitchen and um, but to me, it's all related, like doing the pizza, but plus like the band, the music, and like we try to produce events sometimes too, like selling pizza and also having like DJs or or bands or um, like visual art too. Um, but yeah, I love baking, and so <laughs> I started my own business and didn't want to want to be my own boss. <laughs> That's awesome. But so yeah, um, for now it's just a pop up, but. Um, yeah, hopefully I have like a store, like a brick and mortar one day. <laughs> cool. Nice. Cooking is definitely an art. Like <laughs> it takes some skill, some patience, you know, timing and everything. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yes. I love pizza. You should yeah. try the one here in Chicago too if you haven't yet. <laughs> I know. Like, yeah, you got to yeah. give me the. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll talk about pizza <laughs> after. <laughs> um, well, I do comics. I have a comics page. I always, I always love like drawing little silly things. Sometimes they can be very not appropriate for kids, but it's, <laughs> it is funny, you know, and, and I enjoy it. I concentrate mainly on animals. I don't really draw people. I do like rats especially because I think they're, it's very fun to draw. And I also do uh, the ratas merch, you know, all the ratas t-shirts. Have, we have more designs than songs. <laughs> <laughs> we have more t-shirts than songs. <clears throat> so I have a lot of fun doing it, you know, things like underwears and shorts and, you know, all type of things. The, the models over there in the back. <laughs> the best. No models, I see. Oh. <laughs> so yeah, that's that's my thing. Illustration, and I'm getting into animation because I would love to do like the rats talk and move. So yeah. Would you possibly make like a music video with the animations? I we always thought about that, and I would love to do it. I think animation is really hard, especially because I'm learning on my own YouTube, and I'm not very easy learning things guys <laughs> so but I am learning and I know a little more than I used to so that's my next goal animation that's awesome you sound like you got it because everything it sounds like everything you guys know right now you guys have taught yourselves and all about yourself so you definitely got it oh, that's, thank you. that's <laughs> awesome <laughs> oh, uh, well I teach pre-k that's very that's fun, but it's also very artistic. Like we are always using our hands, building stuff, um, making stuff with Play-Doh, painting, crayons. Like it's it's like a very colorful job, um, and it's fun. That's so something you own, though. Mm -hmm. I paint, but not anymore. <laughs> I used to paint. Yeah, no, I don't do it anymore. Maybe you guys should collaborate on yeah. a painting or something. That would be awesome. Okay. 
<laughs> oh yeah. Uh, well, I e- every Christmas I give Yadi a a painting for like a gift. But I make a painting or a collage or something, and she likes it. <laughs> I think she <laughs> underestimates herself because the paintings are absolutely amazing. A lot of people have told me it's not just me liking them. It's like they're really amazing. Even like our friend Daniela has asked her for paintings because it's just she has she has a skill and she just have to explore a little more. Yeah. Oh, I also play in another band. <laughs> Like three other bands. <laughs> she forgot about that. <laughs> I forgot about that, yeah. I also play in another <laughs> <laughs> Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah. Uh, well, we're, we're like, taking a nap right now. We're not really playing. Um, it's a Selena cover band. We kind of make it punk because I, I can't play cumbia, you know, on drums. <laughs> I play punk. Um, it's called Amor Prohibido, and we... Oh, we that's amazing. I'm sorry. <laughs> We started like around the same time as Ratas, 2015, a year after Ratas. We played a lot of shows because like, you know, like Selena related shows, like for Selena's birthday or, yeah, Selena's birthday, we played like every year. Um, and another band, Diaz Azules, with uh, two friends uh, from New York, two other Peruvian musicians in New York. That's also punk. <laughs> Um, yeah, so I guess I, it, like, their outlet is, like, dance, pizza, <laughs> Anime, comics, <laughs> yeah, and I just, like, do more drumming, yeah. That's awesome. You guys all go hand in hand. That's, that's beautiful. Um, I know you attended, I have to ask, the Women's March in Washington. How was that? Oh, I, I did, yeah, I did. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, oh, it, it was a sea of people. We, oh, it was a really nice experience uh, that I got to go. Uh, I, it, it happened in, you know, all over the country. Like, I, I saw um, images of, like, different cities, and but definitely the one in D.C. was, definitely the one in D.C. was the more massive one. Yeah, like, it took me hours to meet up with, with like, my other friends that I was with, it was very, I don't know, I, 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 I don't know, uh, <laughs> I'm not a fan of the pussy hats, the pink hats, but just the fact that all those people were there together for that same cause and against that same person, it, it meant a lot. For sure. Yeah. Would you guys say you guys have like a sisterhood going on in the band? Yeah. I believe so, and I think that if you want to be successful at any band, the base of a band is friendship, and I'm talking about real friendship, not that friendship where you go party and you're drinking, no, I'm talking about a real friendship where, like, you guys just want to be around each other, and there's problems, you got to get each other's back, and you guys genuinely enjoy each other's company and life, and you get excited when somebody is doing something or somebody has a little success. You, you it's Your success is your own happiness, and to me, they're like my sisters, and she's my real sister too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We also have an extended family of rats, like people who uh, have played with us, or we have really, really close to us. Whenever we travel, whenever we go somewhere, we always invited them. But not all the time they can come, but every time it's just a constant party. Every time we all get together, um, that's what, something we try to always gather. That's the reason why we even play music. It's just ex- the excuse to get together and do something artistic. Yeah. And also, I think I would say it's more like a relationship, like a r- romantic relationship. <laughs> like, you know, we fight, <laughs> we, like, we we don't break up, but, like, we fight, <laughs> and then, we're, like, we, we make up, and we're like, okay, all right, let's try it again. Like, let's, let's keep going, because like, it's like we love it so much. I was about to curse. <laughs> we love it so much <laughs> that, like, okay, I, let, we can you know get through this we can we can do it we can okay let's keep going it's ca- it's like a relationship too and like our friends uh daniela and kate are here with us uh they came on yeah. they came yeah. with us from philly and from new york kate uh our first well our second bass player <laughs> well, because Jan- Janita, Janita well okay our first, our first official bass player we had so many 
Um, Kate is here and Daniela, our official merch lady. <laughs> She's still learning the base. She's, uh, oh, and she sings in Inspector 7. Yeah. Inspector Seven. She's the singer for Inspector 7, a uh, ska band from uh, New Jersey. Are we sisters, Natalie? <laughs> <laughs> For light. <laughs> no, yeah, they inspire me like to do anything, and yeah, getting together. Usually once a week, we can. It's like a therapy almost to be able to be together, and then after practice, we end up sometimes going out after, and yeah, and um, I'm so glad to be a part of it because. <laughs> Yeah, it's changed my life for sure. <laughs> and I don't really fight with them, so I let them fight. <laughs> <laughs> let us fight. <laughs> you just eat the I'm popcorn. I'm the Libra. <laughs> oh, nice. Oh. Peacekeeper. <laughs> what are your signs? Pisces. Pisces. Sagittarius. Mm. So you two, Pisces, do you guys like beef a lot? Because you guys are the same sign. No, we actually the ones that are more... Uh, saying <laughs> I'm the most conflictive one I just th say whatever no. I think so I'm the most conflictive one. I accept it yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't deny it we take it that's awesome <laughs> <laughs> right <laughs> definitely cool so have you guys heard about Villa Palooza before? You, you wanted to yeah I actually have um, I don't remember how uh, I guess uh, my friend, my friend, my friend Renzo, I was about to say his name. My friend Renzo from Diaz Azules and Actronica, um, he knew about it. He had heard about it. And he, um, I think you can apply to play. Like, you can submit something. Like, if you get picked, you get to play. So I guess we tried a couple years ago with Diaz Azules, but we, we didn't get it. And he he told me also like oh Rata should should try and like apply and I guess I did last year and this year I forgot about it, but yeah we got invited. <laughs> <Yay>. <laughs> what are the energies like right now? Like thinking about playing at Villa Palooza? I'm anxious. Stomach a dropped. <laughs> 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 I mean we're ready. We're really excited. Yeah. Uh, we have a new song. Mm -hmm that we're gonna premiere tonight wow. yes and uh finally and no but we're really excited right yeah. that's awesome nervous, <laughs> nervous. are you yeah. guys gonna have merch at villa yes unfortunately this time normally we have bags underwears shorts what else we have um pins? all type of pins patches. and uh, patches and patches and stuff this time because we have such l short little notice and i was super we're all super busy here doing <laughs> our things uh we only have shirts today and the records and the records, and the records. Mm -hmm. we didn't even bring that, m that many shirts so but still we have some and we actually have our new shirt the four color shirt that our model in the back is wearing they can see it. Yeah, it's, that is the name of our new song. Um, well, it's called Enciendelo, which means Enciendelo, <laughs> which means turn it on. But uh, it means turn on the fire, turn off the fear, you know? So that's... Yeah, Yari that's doesn't fun. only design the shirt. She is the screen printer of all the shirts. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Handmade. That's awesome. <laughs> what about the patches? How do you guys go about the patches? Same thing. We just get, uh, cut little squares and we print something. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> <laughs> That's so awesome. You guys are so... Punk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's so DIY punk. <laughs> <laughs> That's totally awesome. Um, well, yeah, I'm, I'm excited to see you all play and listen to your new song um, mm -hmm. since we haven't heard it and no one has heard it yet. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you also did the cover for the vinyl? Yeah, that mm -hmm. was actually my very first... That's why it looks like um, <laughs> crap. It was my <laughs> first was illustration nice. um, ever. So it's not very neat, it's not very nice, guys, but believe me, I oh. struggle so much with it because I never use a program, I never... Digitally. It was digital for the first time, so actually that inspired me to do the comics. So it's mm -hmm. very connected, everything. Because I was like, oh my God, what if I can do like all these cartoons now like this? So yes, that it looks super it. fun. And <laughs> the rat is pink because when rats are born, they have no hair. Yeah, like, hairless. Right. Oh, that's a good <laughs> so point. So it's not related to anything, just because they're hairless. <laughs> yeah, they're right. hairless. I really like the the symbolism, the metaphors. Yeah, like yeah. innocencia, the tears. Yeah, I love it. Conscience, conscience. Yeah. You're feeding yeah. the the baby rat some conscience. 
Dans système. 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 <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you everyone listening, you you need to see this cover. It's pretty fun. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Yeah, we'll have the vinyls at uh, the fest today. We'll have the vinyls today. At, I don't know how much they are. <laughs> I lost you. Oh, we don't know yet. But um, yeah. So we're you know really happy to be here with you all, Ratas and Cello. Thank you so much for being here at Lumpen. Thank, thank you so thank much, guys. We really appreciate you inviting us. It means a lot to us. Yes. Thank you. It was a great conversation, you know, about how you guys started your um, progression and also talking about the the do it yourself um, scenes in New York and wherever you guys have also been at. Um, can you tell me your social media? Yeah, we have Instagram. I guess we're, we're more active on Instagram. It's uh, at ratas and celo with a Z, celo. And then we have Facebook, same thing, ratas and celo with a Z. Bandcamp. Bandcamp, same thing. <laughs> ratas SoundCloud. and celo, SoundCloud. YouTube. YouTube. You oh, YouTube. we have a YouTube channel with a new video that you should check out. <laughs> <laughs> it's very, it says a little, you get to know, you get to know us a little more. Awesome. Yep. No. And thank you so much for being super open and brave to talk about really strong topics, not only in your music, but in our conversation for today. Um, and yeah, it was a really fun time. Can't wait Yay. to see you guys thank live you. at the Thank you very much, thank guys. You. Thank you so much. Awesome. Well, I am Nine. I am Melissa. And these are... Ratas en celo. <laughs> and we are What's Up. Thank you for tuning in. <laughs>